Hi, this is Dr. Ernesto. Today I'm going to teach you 10 strategies on how to cool your house and save over a thousand dollars a month. Now I've been managing properties for over 20 years and that's a big issue now with global warming and the hot temperatures everywhere. The first question people ask me is, does your building have AC? Okay, but I also have to be conscientious of cost because there's high inflation, people are struggling right now. So I have to be conscientious of my tenants and I need to make sure that they're not spending too much money on cooling so they can afford to pay the rent. If you want to be a good landlord, you got to be conscientious of people. So in my own world with my parents, myself, friends, it's the same issue. I have my friend Joanna in Bakersfield. She's telling me she's spending over a thousand dollars a month on cooling. That's a lot. That's a lot of money for a lot of people. Twelve thousand dollars a year. That's enough for, to fill up your 401k almost. So that can really add up over time. You could buy a Tesla with that car. You could buy yourself, you know, maybe two or three Teslas. I mean, that's a, that's a lot. So how can you save some money? So let me go over my top strength strategy. I've been talking to some of my engineering friends over the years, and I've done a lot of research on developing this plan. So the first thing you want to think about is how to prevent the heat from getting to your house in the first place. So there's something called convection. You don't want the heat to actually hit your building and then transfer in. So then it gets trapped inside. And you want to avoid that. So first thing you got to do is put up some heat shields around your property. Do some landscaping. Put up bushes, put up trees. That's going to help absorb all the sunlight so it doesn't hit your property in the first place. So what I do is I use bushes and I use a lot of citrus trees. I live here in California. Uh, lemon trees, orange trees. Uh, grapefruit trees, all that stuff grows really good in this weather and then I can eat it. So it gives me a double benefit. I get to grow organic citrus. So, I, And the good thing is a lot of them don't grow very high. I plant them so they grow up to about the roof line. The reason being is that I have solar panels. So I don't want them to cover up my solar panels. So I get fruit and I get a shield from the sun. That's the first thing. So use strategic landscaping. It's inexpensive and it actually can pay back itself over time because of the food you're producing. Tip number two, cover up the concrete. So the way concrete works, I think of it kind of like a battery. Throughout the day, there's sunlight hitting it and it's absorbing heat all day. And then it radiates heat. Try it out. If you live in Arizona or anywhere where it's hot, which is pretty much everywhere now, <laughs> if you walk around at night barefoot, walk on the dirt, it'll feel cool. And then you walk on the concrete and it'll feel hot. You'll say, wow, the sun's been down for like a few hours. It, it radiates heat for hours. So what I do is the concrete immediately around the property, I cover it up. The easiest way is I buy uh, astral turf, like the fake grass, I just unroll it. So it looks nice and that way the heat hits the, the carpet and that absorbs it. And then it just radiates off that really quick. It doesn't save it like a battery, like the concrete. Another strategy I've used is I've actually painted it. I've used a product called Tropic Cool. It's white. I paint the concrete and I just leave it like that. Or if I want it to look like concrete again, I buy gray paint and I paint over that. And that's going to prevent that uh, concrete from storing heat and then radiating it onto your house for like a few hours after the sun goes down. Remember, you're only awake a few hours normally after sundown. Then you go to sleep to go to work. So. If you have a patio or something like that, it's gonna keep your house hotter and you're gonna feel it till you go to sleep. So you want your house to be cool so you can chill out in the evening and enjoy your time with your family. Strategy number three, sunshades. Now, just a disclaimer, all of these strategies, I've used them all, every one of them. And the interesting thing is that I've tried them one by one at different properties on their own. And I've seen that every one of them has had a significant, significant impact on cooling. This is a really good one. It's easy. I learned this from my friend Dr. Waters. He's an orthopedic surgeon. He went to Home Depot. He bought a mesh that you can actually look through. They're called sun, sun sails. They have sun shades and I actually use just rollable shades that I can turn and it goes up and down. I put them on the side of my property. It allows sun to enter so I can still get some sunlight into my windows. But it's really cool because the way it works the sunlight shines on it, the mesh absorbs it, and then there's airflow behind it. So you install it about, you know, a few inches to a foot off the building. You don't put it up against your building. 
that'll work also, but it's more effective if you live with, leave a little space. I usually leave about a, a foot. What I do is I attach it to the overhang off the roof and it hangs off the side and I put it on the sides where the sun is hitting your building. So I live in Los Angeles, California. The sun here rises in the southeast. So I put it on the so southern and the eastern part of the house. So when the sun rises and it's hottest during the day, it's hitting that mesh. And what it does is it absorbs it all and never allows it to actually go into my building because the, the airflow behind it carries off that heat as it's radiating off that, that mesh. Now some of it is going to get in, but 90% of it is not. So it's very effective. It doesn't cost anything. You buy the, the mesh one time for 40, 50 bucks and you're done. And it's going to keep all that heat off your building. Tip number four, I buy thick thermal curtains. Now these are great because sure you spend a hundred bucks on them, but they're good year round. What they do is they keep heat from coming into your building, but the curtains are thick. They look just like regular curtains. So they also work for light pollution and noise pollution, which I like. I don't like a lot of light when I'm sleeping or sound because it disturbs your sleep. So this helps cool your house and it keeps it quiet and dark, which is what you want. In the winter time, it has the same effect. It helps with cool, keeping down your heating costs. So it has a dual purpose. This works really good. I put it over the windows and it keeps heat again. Whatever escapes that mesh, some of it's still going to radiate through. It hits the curtain. That's going to reflect on that heat. Tip number five, Tropical. Now this is basically white paint. It's really easy to apply. I made another video on how to install it. You basically just paint it on your, on your roof and when the sun hits it, it absorbs it and reflects it. So it doesn't go into your house in the first place. You gotta treat your roof with this stuff. It's really good. I also use it, again, on the south and the eastern facing walls so it doesn't allow the heat to get into my house. So I've painted it on stucco and on wood siding. You can't even tell, it just looks like white paint. Now, if, for example, one of the houses I painted, it's yellow, well, it doesn't look bad. I just have one wall that's white. It looks like I'm trying to do something decorative, but I have painted over it with yellow paint or whatever other light color I use. I use light colors on the buildings because that also helps not to attract uh, heat. You don't want to use dark colors on your building, especially if you live somewhere that's hot. That's going to attract more heat in. So yes, you can paint over it and you won't even tell, you can't tell that it's there. And that stuff is unbelievable tip number six attic foil now if you've ever seen like a race like a marathon or a running race you see people with those like looks like tin foil blankets they wrap themselves on that was created by nasa as a heat shield to help go in and out of the out of the atmosphere so it's really good stuff it's really easy to apply you just go in your attic and you staple it to all the walls up there and it'll probably cost you about a hundred bucks now at my mom's house she was spending between a thousand and two thousand dollars a month on cooling bills with their AC. I installed this stuff and it and it knocked her electrical bill down 25% right off the bat. So we were saving 250 to 500 bucks. It paid for itself like in two weeks. Most of the stuff I'm teaching you today will literally pay for itself in like a few weeks or if not a few months at most because heating costs are getting higher. More people are using AC, and when people do that, it drives up the price of electricity. Remember, most cities have something called peak usage. The kilowatt hour might be like 0 0.3 cents, like here in Los Angeles. But if you use it between like 11 and 2, when most people use electricity, it doubles. You're paying like double the electrical price. Or if you use it like from 2 to 5, it's still going to be up more. It could be like 75% uh, of normal. So. If you're using electricity at night, when it's just off peak usage, electrical is going to be cheaper. That's why you don't want to wash dishes with your dishwasher or wash clothes with your washing machine during the day. Do all that stuff after work in the evenings because that's going to lower your electric bill. It's going to make it easier on the grid and it's going to not create heat in your house. Remember, if you're running motors in your house, you're going to create heat. So you don't want to run that stuff during the day. It's just gonna cause more work for your cooling system. Tip number seven, insulation. Now, this house I'm in right now was made in 1910. There is no, no way to insulate it. It's basically just boards <laughs> all around the house. There's no 
no inner wall, so I couldn't insulate it. But other old houses that we have that we manage, you can buy something called blown insulation. It's very easy to install, very inexpensive. I buy it at Home Depot, it comes in bales, and it's pretty neat. It's made out of recycled newspaper, and it's treated with non-toxic substances like boric acid, so it doesn't attract rodents or roaches or anything like that. And it's also a flame retardant. And all you do is you make a small hole, the size of a quarter in the wall, in the drywall, and you put a little pipe in there, and usually if you buy enough bales, they even let you borrow the machine for free. You just put the pipe in there and it blows the insulation into the walls. Because sometimes I hear from people like, oh, I can't insulate my house, it's old. I have to rip all the walls off. That's because you're thinking of that insulation that has the big rolls. You don't have to use that stuff. You can use this stuff. It's better for the environment. I did that, again, at a property, and I was able to cut the cooling cost by 50% immediately. The insulation paid for itself in two months. Two months, and it lasts forever. So imagine that. You're going to literally make thousands and thousands of dollars, depending on where you live. Like my friend Justin in Vegas, they spent a lot of money on, on heating, so it can save you a lot of money. And also in terms of insulation, make sure you also insulate your attic. That's probably the most important one. Remember the sun's above you, so a lot of people think, why would I insulate the attic? It's going to keep the heat in your house in the winter and keep the cold there in your house in the summer. Because there's something called convection, which I'll explain in a moment. So convection is a real interesting thing. It's basically, think of it this way, when you got molecules that are heated, they're going to expand and they're going to move all over the place, okay? When you got cool air, the molecules are moving kind of slow, so they'll kind of bunch together and they'll hold together. That's why you want to make sure you take advantage of this natural phenomenon called convection to trap the cold air inside your house and get the hot air to leave. So putting insulation up in your attic is going to prevent heat from entering your building. Now there's two ways to do it. You could either use the same blown insulation, the walls, that works just fine. I've used that in many houses, you just blow it out and cover everything. The thicker the layer, the more insulation you're gonna get. So I usually put it real thick, about a foot. Um, or you can just use the traditional insulation, the fiberglass one they sell, that unrolls. You just measure the width of the raptors, there's usually like 12 inches or 18 inches or 15 inches, you just unroll it and then you're done with it. It's very easy to do, very effective, never goes old, never goes bad. Insulation is like the easiest thing you can do to cool your house and probably the number one most effective way. Tip number eight, open your windows. Again, I'm going to talk about convection because this, this is real cool. So if your house is hot, that means you're trapping the hot air in there, okay? Open the windows, get a screen door. If you're worried about safety, get one of those metal uh, uh, doors that they put. It's a screen door, but it has a lock on it. What you wanna do is you wanna take advantage of convection. When you're using some of these other strategies for cooled air, if you open the windows, you're gonna cause cross circulation. The air is gonna circulate in and out, okay? Like attracts like, remember that. So, if you have heat in your house, first off, heat is going to rise, okay? Those molecules are going to be heated, like think of boiling water that's jumping all over. So there's going to be a lot of movement and they expand, they need more space. If you have windows open and a door open, the heat is going to expand, it's going to rise and expand out of your house. What's going to happen? More air is going to circulate in, but the cold air is going to get trapped inside of your house. That's just the way it works. It's almost like a magnet. Those cool, that cooler air is cooler and the cells are not moving as much, the molecules. They're gonna group together. So that's a good way to trap the cold air in your house, the use of convection. But you gotta make sure you open your windows and your curtains. Like a lot of folks think, well, I'm gonna close the windows to have an AC. Now, if you have an AC, yes, you wanna trap the cold air. But the purpose of this video is to teach you how to survive without AC, but if you do need AC, I'm gonna show you some strategies at the end of the video, of how to manage that as well, so you're not blowing up your electrical bill every month. And while we're on the topic, if you have money and you're somewhere that's really hot and you have the old single pane windows, well, it would be worth it to upgrade to the solar in, to heat insulated windows. That would save you a lot of money. Those windows are low E, so they don't allow 
stuff to come into your house like heat or cold and it doesn't allow it to go out so it's very good the worth the investment i've purchased those and installed them in several properties i typically order them extra thick so i don't have sound coming in either they have something called sound master so they work for also soundproofing your your house and again these are lifetime investments they're never going to break unless someone throws a baseball through your window so these are it's going to cost you some money but it's not terribly expensive and most of the windows you buy now, they're made so you can install it yourself. They're really easy. They just slide in and then you just put molding around it. They're very easy to use. So there's videos on YouTube to show you how to install them, in fact. Number nine, if all that stuff is not bringing it down far enough, then you can use fans. And I'm gonna show you specifically how to use the fans. Now, I live in LA. We have some of the best weather on the whole planet. I think we're like in the top 1% or something like that. So, it's been a little hot, it's been the 90s here. This house used to be an oven. No insulation, thin walls. It was actually 10 degrees hotter here before I did all these strategies on this house. So if it was 100 outside, it was 110 in here. And it was hot, and it felt even hotter because it's just heat radiating on you every day. So now, since I did the strategies and I measured the temperature, I've been able to drop the temperature between 20 and 25 degrees inside the house. Think about that. If it's 100 outside, that's bad. 75 degrees to 80 is not too bad in here. And with airflow, it's totally fine. This might sound kind of crazy, but there's days where I go outside and I'm like, wow, it's so hot, I had no idea. Because it's so cool in here. And sometimes I've even had to put on like a thicker shirt because I feel a little bit cool in here. So. Keep that in mind, but if you need a fan, I gotta show this you this thing is amazing. This is called a Vornado. Now, when I've been to Home Depot or somewhere to buy a fan, they have tiny fans like this that are made in China. They're cheap, they're like 10 bucks, okay? And then you look at this one, you're like, wait a minute, this one costs like $80 and it's the same size. So like most things, you're thinking, well, if it's the same size, I'll just get a bigger one. You know, I'll spend more money, it'll work better, right? Not even close. I did not want to spend the money on this. Now I have like six of them that I've given out. These fans are amazing. I had a tenant that left one behind and I inherited this. What it does, sure it costs about seven times as much, but it's gonna save you seven to 10 times the electricity. And in fact, this can actually replace an AC unit. A fan cannot, in most cases. Some cases it can, but this thing, it creates a wind tunnel inside of your house. So, if I turn this on right here, one fan is gonna envelop the whole room. It goes to all the corners and circulates, which means I could be pointing this straight forward at you, and with other fans, you point this forward, and you have to be standing or sitting right here to get the benefit, not this one. I could be standing behind it in that corner or behind it in that corner, and I'm still gonna get the benefits from this. It's amazing, it does kinda of like a figure eight, and it touches on all the walls, and it's crazy. I turn it on, and I'll have like, I'll stick like stick, uh, stick it notes, post-it notes on the walls, and they'll start fluttering. And they're on the sides, they're behind it, and you're like, whoa, this is tech, it's American. It's called a Vornado. Very good investment. I've had this one now for several years since somebody left it behind. It doesn't break down, so it's even gonna outlive all those cheap ones that you're gonna buy that are made in China, they're gonna burn out right away. Another thing that I like to use is a window fan. These are also very cool. This bad boy, you put it into your window, it's really easy, it's not like difficult. You just open the window and slide it in and lower the window on it, that's it. Super easy. What this does, it helps again with convection like we talked about earlier. You put this in one window, it has options. You either have one pushing in and one pushing out. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna take the more active molecules, the heat, the heat out, and it's gonna push cold air in. And the cold air is gonna set in there, which is really cool. But what I usually do is I, I put them both so that they're pointing inward, they're sucking air in, and I open the rest of the windows in the house. So now you're circulating air through your entire home and you're taking advantage of convection. You're pushing cool air in and it's forcing all the cool hot air out. These are cheap, it's like 20 bucks. 
very effective called a window fan. Now, if you have a little bit more money, you can install a ceiling fan. I have a ceiling fan on here right now. It's actually going while we've been watching this wi uh, video to cool me because I had to close all the windows to keep the noise out. So ceiling fans are good also, but again, you're gonna have to hire a handyman or if you are able to, you can install it yourself. They're not that difficult, but you can easily get a tornado and a window fan and that'll be just as effective. Now, of course, if all else fails and you have to get an AC, then use an AC strategically. Think about this. When I was talking to my friend, she was telling me, hey, I have the AC going and it's cooling my whole house. It's costing me like $1,200, $1,500 a month. Yeah. So she switched over to window ACs and it cut her, her electric bill 70%. What she did was she just put an AC in her window, in her bedroom where she slept that night. That was it. You know, if you have like an office you're gonna work in or you have children, just put the AC in the window and only put it in that room. And just use it where you need it so you're not heating the bathroom, the kitchen, the living room, you know, everywhere else where you're not. I mean, you can install one in the living room in every room, but just use it when you're actually in that room. That way you're not using as much electricity. Central AC is probably the most inefficient. It uses a lot of electricity. And if you do have that, make sure you're cleaning your filters. You got it. You're supposed to clean them every six months. If you don't, it gets stuffed up with lint and garbage, you know, from the air. And that's going to lower the efficiency of the AC unit you're going to burn more electricity. Now, I know a lot of people, when I talk to my tenants, they're like, well, I don't want to spend 20 bucks to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and change out that AC filter. Well, 20 bucks. In some cases, I've seen people save hundreds in the same month just by switching that out. So it pays for itself probably in a few days. So spend the money and just change the filter and your AC at least every year at the beginning of summer. That's gonna help you save even more money. Tip number 10, okay, bedding and clothing. Now, I'm wearing this really cool shirt, literally. My friend Dave Spare, he started a new company, a clothing company, it's called On The Rocks. I totally recommend their clothing. This shirt is cool, it's made of real nice material, specifically for summer. Now, you gotta adapt. Global warming is not going away. Things are only gonna get hotter. So you need to adapt yourself. Remember, we humans are smart. And what, like Charles Darwin said, it's not the smartest or it's not the most uh, or the strongest that survive. It's the most flexible. You got to be flexible. You got to be adaptive. Just like those animals in the Galapagos Islands. Adapt. Change your clothing. You should have your winter wardrobe where you have thick clothing, thick sheets, flannel sheets, all that stuff. And then your summer clothing where I use on the rocks clothing, cotton t-shirts, cotton sheets. You know, if you're hot, don't use blankets, just use sheets or don't use anything. Sleep naked, you know, or just use real thin cotton clothing to sleep in. You need to be adaptive. If you're going to use synthetic polyester sheets and stuff, again, let's talk about convection. That's going to trap heat underneath your bedding. Your body is 98.6. You're radiating heat every second of the day. So once you put a sheet over yourself, that's why you have blankets and sheets. They're meant to trap heat in there, keep you warm when you're sleeping at night. But it's hot, you wanna do the opposite. Use cotton and breathe more. You're still gonna trap some heat in there, but it's gonna allow most of the heat to escape. So if you're using you know, uh, fake fabrics, you know, artificial fabrics, it's gonna cause issues like polyester. It's gonna trap all the heat in there. You're gonna get really sweaty. Think about going on the sunlight in a cotton shirt or like a polyester shirt. And you're out there and you're like, man, it's embarrassing. I'm all sweaty, your armpits and everything. You don't want to dress like that when it's hot outside. You also don't want to dress like that inside your house to sleep. Use comfortable, loose clothing. Don't use tight clothing either when you sleep because that's going to help trap heat. You want to use things that are going to breathe. So I, I've been using this shirt I bought. It's real nice. I bought it on the rocks and it's keeping me cool during the day. And at night I use Cotton clothing, cotton sheets, that's it. No blankets, I don't need it, summertime. And one last thing to keep in mind, you know, like I cook a lot, I cook all my own meals. I cook strategically. You know, you don't wanna trap heat in your house. So when it's really hot, I don't turn the oven on or the stove. I use cold food, 
I eat salads, I eat fruits, you know, eat stuff that's not gonna create heat in your home. If you do need to cook or want to cook, like I eat beans, I cook them early in the morning, like five, six in the morning, before the house starts getting hot, so I can turn it off. And then I cook a bigger pot and I keep it in the fridge and eat that over a few days so that I don't have to waste electricity or, or create more heat in my house. That's not good. So think strategically on what it is you're eating and your cooking times. And also another thing I was just thinking is your AC unit. When you place your AC unit in your house, think about where the heat is. If it's rising in the southeast like it does here, I put the window AC units for my uh, tenants on the west side and the south side of the building. So if you have the heat rising like it does here, we have sunlight on the south and the east side. I'll put the AC on the north and the west side of the building. You know, think about it. The AC unit is just another motor. It creates heat. If you put it in the sunlight, it's going to heat up. It's not going to be as efficient and it's also going to burn it out faster. It's going to work harder. So you don't want that. You want your AC unit to work less. So put it on the cooler side of the house. Now, if you don't have an option, the only window is on the hot side, put something over it to, heat, to shield it from the sun. Now, the AC unit needs lots of airflow, so you don't want to cover it. You're going to burn out the machine. But if you can hold, if you can install maybe a board or a piece of tarp, maybe a foot up over it, and then put something to support that so that the sunlight is not directly hitting the AC unit, that's also going to help cool it. Now, I've used every one of these strategies. I don't use an AC unit. I've actually never used one where I live. Yeah, the way I think of it is if my house is hot, then I need to adapt. I need to change my clothing. I need to work on the building. So now everywhere I lived, I don't use AC. I just do more adaptations, more and more and more until I get it cool enough to where I don't need to do any more. So that's the way you should gauge it. Wherever you live in the, in the, in the world, Think about how you can adapt the environment around you. Think about what you can do to avoid using AC. AC is going to cost you a lot of money and it's going to cause more damage to the environment. I was just talking to my friend Abdul in Pakistan and he was telling me, dude, I haven't been able to work for two weeks, 15 days, he said exactly. I said, why? He goes, no electricity for 15 days. Now, a lot of places in the world they don't have flexibility. There's no extra power plants going around or nuclear power plants or solar panels or wind turbines. That's probably 90% of the planet. They don't have that. And that's where it's getting hottest in poor countries. So they don't have electricity because the rich people are probably using AC and it causes power outages. So then nobody gets electricity. I mean, I live in California, which is one of the richest places on the planet. We have power outages. We literally have thousands a year. I didn't know that. I was talking to someone at the power company. Some of them are just like a few seconds. You don't even notice, but it goes out all throughout the world. There's power outages everywhere. So you don't want to depend on AC to keep you cool. Cause it, it could be a life or death experience. We have something really interesting. It's called wet bulb that's happening. This wet bulb theory is real interesting. So think about this. When you get hot, you start to sweat. And I, this is important. I'm explaining this to a lot of my patients in the hospitals because it literally is life or death. So you get hot, you get sweat, and then the sweat evaporates off your skin. That causes a cooling effect, right? Remember, convection. It, it sucks the heat off your body. That's how sweating works. Now what's happening with this high heat, there's a lot of humidity in the world because the heat is also causing the water in the ocean to evaporate. So there's more moisture in general in the atmosphere. So what's happening in some places is there's so much moisture in the air that it, it reaches equilibrium with the sweat in your body. So normally, remember, high concentration to low concentration. You sweat, the moisture from your body evaporates into the air because it's lower concentration of moisture. That causes a cooling effect. What's happening now is I'm sweating, there's moisture on your body, but the air is so humid there's nowhere for it to evaporate to. It's at equilibrium. So it can't go anywhere. It's not going from high to low. There is no low. It's high everywhere. It's high, high. So if it's high, there's not going to be an evaporation. So what happens with that is it traps the heat in your body 
and it actually causes organ failure and it's happening in a lot of parts of the world this year we've had tens of thousands of deaths around the world from this this is kind of a new thing that we're discovering it's getting so hot there's so much humidity that it's causing people to die even like at temperatures that people normally wouldn't die at in the low hundreds they're like okay well maybe if it's 120 or 130 like in death valley sure i can see that but no 100 is happening in a lot of places in the world and it's happening at lower temperatures because of this wet bulb theory they call it that because they get a thermometer and it say it's 100 degrees then they get another thermometer they wrap it with like a wet towel and they move the thermometer and normally after they swing it around for a while they'll look at it and they'll say oh, okay it got cooler now the cold air sucked some of the heat off the thermometer and it cooled it but when they do that experiment in hot places where there's a high humidity it's not happening temperature is the same and in some instances it actually heats it because now it's creating a coating it's attracting more heat so it's a really interesting phenomenon you got to be conscious of i have elderly parents that's why I outfitted their house, so they don't even have to use AC. Everything is cool. I don't want them going to organ failure and stuff like that. And I don't want that happening to myself. So think about this. This is about survival. Thank you for listening, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Goodbye.